There's one important issue that you have to understand about tkinter layouts. And that is the widget sizes, because that can be a tiny bit tricky. Let's talk about it. In tkinter, every widget can have a custom size. However, what you also have to understand is that this size will always be overwritten by the layout methods. You basically have two places where you can add a size of a widget, but one is prioritized. For example, if we have something like this, we are creating a label. This label has some text, but much more important, we are giving this label a width. This specific width in this example is going to be 50. Really important here, this is not pixels. Tkinter uses a really weird measurement system where this 50 is the width of 50 characters. It's kind of weird, but don't worry too much about it. What is much more important for now is that we have two different kinds of width. We have the width I've just talked about, and then we have the width of the pack method. Because in here, we are telling the widget to fill the entire horizontal space. As a consequence, Tkinter has to decide, is it going to use this width here or this width here? And the default answer for tkinter is going to be this one here. tkinter always relies on the inbuilt layout methods as the main layout tool. So if you have two different kinds of width, the actual width you are going to get is the one from the inbuilt layout method. Now this might seem quite simple and most of the time it is, but in some cases this can cause problems with the layout, which is why I want to talk about it. I already have a couple of lines ready. If I execute the entire thing, we have an app with two labels inside. Both labels have a background color. I am importing tkinter at the top, then I'm creating a window. After that, we are creating two labels. And after that, we are placing both labels using the pack method. Finally, we are running main loop to see the window. All of this should be fairly simple. And now we can start working on the layout itself. Or more specifically, I want to give label two a custom width. Label one is going to be a reference, so I'm not going to change this, which should make it a bit easier to see what's going on. Both labels are right in the middle of the window. If I now change the width of label two with the width parameter, I can give this a width of 50. If I run this now, you can see we have a much wider label two. Also, what I really want to emphasize here is that the entire width of the window is 400. This width here is 400, and this is in pixels. However, this width here of the label is this dimension here. And this very obviously is not 50 pixels. That is not the unit we are using. Instead, what Tikinter is using is 50 widths of a character. It's a very strange measurement. You are not going to use it that much anyway, so I'm not going to go into much detail. But just be aware, we are not using pixels. All right, but with that, we have a custom width. What we can also do inside of label two, when we are packing it, we can set the fill. And this determines the actual size of the widget. If I in here set this to X and run this again, we can now see that the second label covers the entire width of the window which means that this fill X here covers the entire window, while this width here is simply being ignored. In practice, you could just remove it, and this is what you probably want to do. 99% of the time, you simply want to use the layout methods to create the size of a widget, because that way the entire system is going to be responsive, and, well, using hard-coded numbers can be a problem. For example, if I remove this fill here, we can see our label has a certain width again, but now if I resize the window, this doesn't change. We always have the same width of the label, which is going to be a problem if the window gets too small or if the window gets really large. This is a general thing you want to understand for layouts. You basically always want to have flexible layouts. Otherwise, things can break very, very easily. With that covered, I want to do one more thing. Right now, we looked at the pack method, but we also have to look at the grid layout. For that one, I want to give my window a couple of columns and a couple of rows. Let me start with the column. With column configure, I'm going to create two columns, zero and one. Both are going to have a weight of one, and I'm going to set the uniform to A. 
This I can now duplicate, and I want to have a row configure. I also want to have two rows with zero and one with the same weight and same uniform argument. That way we have four cells with an identical size. Inside of this one, I now want to place my label one and label two, which means label one dot grid. This one I want to place in row zero and column zero. I can duplicate this entire line, change label one to label two, and this one should be in row one. Now if I run this, we can see we have two different sizes for the labels. This once again happens because of this width here. However, I can overwrite this quite easily. If I, for example, for label two, set sticky to north, south, east, and west, we now have the label covering the entire cell. So once again, the inbuilt layout method is overwriting the custom width we have set inside of the widget. If you were using the place method, the same thing would happen. This can be fairly confusing and frustrating at times, so I hope this helped.